What's up, everybody? You know what time it is? It's a little after 12 o'clock. It's time for the most exhilarating, electrifying, entertaining cookie show out there right now with my good friend who needs no introduction, the guru of grilling, the father of flavor, the sultan of smoke. You know him. I love him. Chef Greg Mueller. What's up, everybody? Happy Fun Day Friday to you. My name is Greg Muller. I'm your director of culinary innovation, and we've got a slamming Fun Day Friday for you today. And again, Fun Day Friday would not be complete without my main man, Chef John, on the ones and twos over there keeping us on the straight and narrow and organized. Thank you so much, Chef Greg. I keep messing your last name up. Why do I do that? It's okay. Muller. You just do it because you love me, that's Muller. all. Muller, yeah, I just want to make you special. Okay. I'm trying to make you sorry. Hey, that's all. I'll take that's it, all. okay? Um, anyway. We got a great show today. We're gonna keep this Italian theme going all week long, and we're going full circle. So me and Chef John were thinking long and hard on Monday, trying to plan out this week. Yeah. And we both came to a pretty hard conclusion that fried calamari is yeah. probably one of the greatest appetizers that restaurants screw up every day. Most definitely. So we're gonna show you guys how you can rectify a classic and do your own fried calamari with a little uh, arrabbiata sauce, a little spicy marinara maybe. Mm. It's good stuff, right? Yeah. And then uh, we're going to take a little twist to that calamari. We're going to stuff some of them bad tubes and tentacles with some delicious Italian sausage. But make sure you guys do us a favor. Go ahead and smash that share button. Comment down below what you got going on good this Friday. And uh, Chef John will give you a shout out. And, uh, you know, we'll keep this, uh, this party train moving forward. What do you say? Definitely. So, Definitely. Chef John, now calamari. Yes. It's either delicious or disgusting. Either, either. There's no, there's no in between. No. For sure. It's one of those you're gonna cook it for like, you know, one minute or one hour. Anything in between, and it's garbage. Okay. Um, but we'll show you guys how to make a arrabbiata sauce, a Ooh. spicy marinara. I love it. And Chef John told you guys the other day who's making that banging baked penne, San Marzano tomatoes. Yeah. If you're not making sauce and sugu with San Marzano, San Marzano tomatoes, you're, I mean, just, just stop because it's not going to be as good. My plumber's calling. I can't right. answer the phone. I'm, I'm live on TV <laughs> right now. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get this sauce going. And I'm going to use about an onion and a half because I'm going to use the other half of the onion for the filling for the uh, stuffed squid. And uh, I'm a huge fan of calamari. Now, up where I'm from in Jersey, it's a love-hate relationship because a lot of people will use the squid for bait. Okay, that's true. And yeah, it works great for catching uh, crabs and you know fluke and flounder and stuff, bluefish. But for me, I love deep frying it. I love stuffing it. First time I made stuffed calamari, people looked at me like I was crazy, but it was delicious. So we're just gonna go ahead and kind of small dice up. Some onion here. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. Ooh, and we'll get this nice uh, you got. this Pro spicy status. marinara going because it's good stuff. Now, Chef Greg, traditional stuff that you serve with calamari. Okay. What, like what, what, uh, other appetizers or right, like sauces? Like, like sauces. It, so you usually do marinara. What are some other sauces you could do? So I really love using uh, mayonnaise, pickled ginger, a little uh, sriracha, oh, doing okay. like a spicy sauce. Right. So we've got like a small dice and a little bit finer. <laughs> the finer dice we're going to add into this sausage because that's for, uh, for something else. But we got the RT700 preheated to 400 degrees behind me. We're going to add some olive oil. We're gonna add that onion, okay? And then we're gonna add a little bit of crushed red pepper, okay? And do it to your liking. I like about a teaspoon. We're gonna let that go for just a couple minutes to start to really, you know, get all, all of those oils in that delicious crushed red pepper. 
And then, uh, we're not using smoked garlic for this one. Okay? Now, you could, but I like big cloves of garlic in my sauce. So we'll do five monster cloves. So tell them about that roasted garlic, too. How you Because that stuff came out awesome. Tell them time and tip if they wanted to duplicate that, how they would do Dude, that. Dude, you got to put some of that uh, smoked garlic in your tiramisu last night. Yeah. All right, so smoked garlic, set that grill to like 275. I cut the tops off the garlic, and then I put it in a baking dish, and then I basically just like let it ride for a little while, put some olive oil on the top, um, about an hour and a half to two hours. It honestly depends on the size of your garlic. Now, this garlic is, is pretty big, so this might take closer to that two-hour mark. If you got that, like, little baby garlic at your grocery store, it might take less time. But for me, and I, you can see I'm not wearing gloves when I peel garlic because I love going home <laughs> smelling like garlic and onions. How much does Julie love it? Absolutely hates it. <laughs> but it's one of those, like, just little little dab, like, it just puts a smile on your face. Okay, but I like just to take the garlic that's crushed, just like that. I don't chop it, okay? That's it. I'm going to take that. It's going right in the pool, okay? Boop. Done. And we're just going to let that go for a little while. That's it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Super easy. Super easy. You know what else is super easy? Tell me. Drinking a cold beer on a hot day like today? You know it is. Mm. You know it is. So, uh, Chef Craig, where is uh, your better half at today? Hopefully, he is enjoying a nice massage, a cold Ooh. beer on his brand new Jody Flanagan dick. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's kind of been a weird week without Jody here, I'm not going to lie. Like, usually I'm on the left side of the table. Right. Now I'm kind of in the middle, and I just, yeah. like, the whole feng shui is a little off. <laughs> um, but make sure you guys show Jody Flanagan some love. Go ahead and uh, give us some hearts, give us some wows. And go ahead and make sure you uh, like his Instagram and Facebook page as well. It's me, Barbecue Dad Jody Flanagan, because he's a super solid dude. Chef John, what you got, buddy? Okay, uh, a good friend, Michael Keys, wants to know, what's the difference between the BFG and the Beast? Okay, uh, great question. So the BFG is going to be uh, three interior racks, okay? And that's going to have that 53-pound uh, hopper on the back. You can fit 30 pork butts in there, 30 racks of ribs. Now, the Beast is literally... A horse of another color. I was going to make a beast joke, but I figured it was too much of a pun. The beast is our hog cooker, if you will. Uh, it's available on a cart or a trailer mounted uh, setup, and you can fit a 250 pound whole hog on there. Now, it's actually bigger and smaller than the BFG at the same time. The BFG is greater in square inches, whereas the beast, since it's a singular uh, cooking grate, you can fit those large hogs on there. And uh, we got fifth place yeah at the big pig jig in vienna georgia That's right cooking with our buddy carrie chastain um at hold your horses barbecue yeah i love that guy. last year and that he wants me to go to mississippi and do a hog cook with him as well really um yeah it's a 600 hundred dollar buy-in for a two thousand dollar uh first place you should go chef greg that I sounds mean, we like cook easy some good money hog. to me yeah we cook some good hog so maybe we'll see it's the week after academy so that's kind of a tough ask you know being gone all that's weekend true. that's true and then to to be gone again but this is a good sized tomato so i'm probably only going to use about half of it and this is going to be our filling for the stuffed calamari and you guys are probably thinking why would you stuff calamari dude because it's delicious yeah okay and we're going to braise this off we got a pound of italian sausage okay we've got that chopped tomato that chopped onion we'll save this tomato for later and then um, pickled peppers. Delicious. Yeah. yeah. Are those Good the, pepper, stuff. the pepperoncinis or are they just straight pickled peppers? Uh, they're the uh, pepperoncino peppers. Nice. I drained out most of the juice, but not got all of it. So, again, we're just going to give these a, uh, a rough chop. Now, these are not spicy. They got a little bit of acidity to them, which does give them a little bit of, I'll say, a little bit of heat. But ultimately, they're on the sweeter side. Um, this makes up the marketing team's breakfast some mornings. Definitely. You know, the biddies are out there eating these, these peppers as quick as we can buy them. Okay, just give a little chopperoo, okay? I don't want to make it too, uh, too skinny because, I mean, you want to have a little texture in your food. Chef John, any good questions coming in? 
uh, they're all just starting to come in. They want to know um, time and temp on what, how you're frying, and they also want to know what pellets you're using. We're going to get there. Okay. okay. We can't let all the cats out of the bag because exactly. then the show wouldn't be 40 minutes long. Okay. <laughs> but we will definitely get to it. So we got the pepperoncino peppers in there. We're going to add a couple eggs. Whoop. Just like that. Okay. I mean, this is, this is good stuff right here. We're going to add some shredded mozzarella cheese. Clean up my mess here. And I am going to put gloves on because I'm going to mix it by hand. Okay. Okay. I don't want to have to get the, uh, the gobbly goo all over my hands. Now, I do have some breadcrumbs. We're going to add a little bit of Colden's freaking Greek in here. And Charlie did not open <laughs> the safety Seven seal there. Floor. Sharp is not here today, and it shows. So we're going to add about a teaspoon of that Colden's freaking Greek. And we're just going to mix that up, and I'm going to kind of crush those tomatoes as well. Charlie, on that back table is uh, some Glad gallon-sized bags. Will you grab one? Okay. See, Sherp would have gotten me that bag already. <laughs> so you can see it's kind of loose. I'm going to add some of that breadcrumb in there. And I know exactly how much to add because I made some earlier. And we're just going to kind of mix this up. Okay, it's not going to be like super, super firm like a burger patty or a meatloaf. But it's going to be just enough breadcrumb to kind of bind all that good stuff together. Yes, sir. That's looking delicious. You know, calamari derives its name from Latin. It's actually calamarum. Really? Translate to pen case or ink pod. Surprisingly enough, there you go, I just need one. So we're going to grab this delicious filling here. We're going to stuff it in our zip top bag because there's one thing we don't like here at Rectech, and that's things that do one purpose. That's right. Okay, so we don't have pastry bags around here. We use zip top bags because we can put up leftovers in them or we can uh, use them as pastry bags. Chef Greg, will you run over those ingredients one more time? Shoot, yeah. All right, we got some Italian. Let me clean up my, my mess here. We've got some Italian sausage, some tomatoes, some onions. We've got some of uh, the sweet banana peppers or the mild banana peppers, however you want to, whatever peppers you want to use. We've got uh, some breadcrumbs, some shredded mozzarella, and Colden's freaking Greek, okay? Mm -hmm. Freaking delicious. So good. We've got our, our platter here. And what we're going to do is we're going to stuff these tubes and tentacles. So now you got seafood outside. It's hot. we got a little ice bath here for our fish because I don't know about you. I don't want to eat no warm seafood, right? I want no, it to be nice and not. cold when I'm ready for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this bag. We're going to cut the tip off just like that. Okay, make sure that doesn't get in your food, though. And now we've got our pastry bag. Super simple. So we're going to take our calamari, okay, and these are the tubes. And now we've made sure these are cleaned, but every now and then there could be like a piece of, it almost looks like plastic, but it is the uh, skeletal structure, if you will, of that calamari. So just take that bag and kind of put it in the tube there and just woo, give you a squeeze and stuff that amazing sausage, cheese, yeah, awesome. pepper filling in there just like that. Chef Greg, were those sweet peppers or hot, or sweet sausage or hot sausage? Uh, so this is actually mild Italian. Okay. Okay. You can use whatever you want. You can use spicy if you want. You could use sweet, but I like the uh, the mild because I'm gonna I'm gonna jazz it up with that um, spicy marinara. But all you can do is just kind of stuff these, and you could grill these if you want if you do want to braise them. Um, but we're going to braise these off because, again, calamari, you got to cook for, like, you know, two minutes or two hours. That's right. Okay. And we're just going to go ahead and we got a little small baking dish here. All right, Chef Greg, up. i got a question for you from Terry Reese. Shoot, yeah. He says he's doing a beef tenderloin tonight uh, with Ben's heifer dust wrapped in prosciutto ham. He says, do you have any suggestions? 
He's going to try and do beef tenderloin. Yeah, what's your address? <laughs> All right, so super simple. You can go ahead and uh, season that roast off, wrap it up in the prosciutto. And then I like 275 if you're going to go low and slow on that. Um, you're probably looking, depending on is it, if it's a whole tenderloin, like a seven and a half pound tenderloin, you're probably looking about an hour and 45 to an hour and 50 minutes. It kind of just depends on uh, how big that roast is. Now, if it's smaller steaks, you can go less time. Um, or you can go hot and fast. So 400 degrees, maybe it'll take uh, 45 to 50 minutes. It kind of just depends. Good question. But there you go. Now we've got our stuffed calamari right there. Boom. All right, let's talk calamari real quick. Our good friend Brad Snow asks, how would I choose a good calamari? So it's all going to come in frozen. Okay, so I tend to like to thaw it myself. So if I'm going to buy it, it usually comes in trays. You can thaw it, uh, you know, under cold run, uh, running water. You can thaw it in the, uh, in the fridge overnight. I tend to not buy seafood that is frozen at the fish counter, okay? If I'm going to buy fish at the fish counter, it's fresh stuff. But if it's frozen, I would rather, uh, you know, take care of that myself. But calamari, I like, these are uh, four to six, which means the tubes themselves are four to six inches long, which is big enough that they're tasty, but small enough that they're not tough. Sometimes if the tubes are too big, they can toughen up a little bit. Uh, I don't really care for that. But let's go ahead and get these San Marzano tomatoes in here. And you can see I've started to get a little sweating on that garlic and onion and really started to like release some of those essential oils. We're going to grab those tomatoes here. And these are a whole peeled San Marzano tomatoes. Okay, so what I like to do is just take the kind of spoon and kind of break it up. That's it, just like that. Now this is going to cook, you know, for probably about 45 minutes or so. And then at that point, if I wanted to, I could grab a potato masher and, and break up the chunks even more. But for me, I like it like that. Now we're not going to add any basil just yet because it's just going to get beat up. But you know I got your back. Okay, so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to grab some of that delicious arrabiada sauce. Ooh. Ooh, child, Man, that please. looks good, Chef Greg. And then John <clears throat> was so nice. Yeah. Look at my basil. He got me a bouquet of basil. Yeah, bro. This smells so good. Only the best for you. All right, so now is when you're going to grab that basil. Isn't John sweet? He got me a bouquet of basil. I mean... That's love right there. That's love. True love. <laughs> That's true love. That's true love. All right, so now we're going to take some of that basil. And for me, I don't chop it. I just want to rip it, okay? This is rustic. This is grandma cooking. Yeah. Okay? Grandma didn't do that. She went out there, and she was going to just rip it up, okay? Boom. So there we go. Now, you see how nice and thick that is? Now, you're going to grab that stuffed squid and put that... Arrabiata sauce on the top. Don't worry, Jordan. I'm not going to get it on you. Okay? Just like that. Now, this is going to braise. It's going to take about an hour at like 275, 300. Okay? Boom. Just like that. Okay? But you know I got your back. Okay? Right there. We've got those stuffed tubes. Ooh, man. Oh. That's going to take a while to cool down, so we're going to come back to that. That looks awesome. Yeah, I mean, that does not suck. Wow. Does not suck. Hey, John, I got a question for you. Yeah, what's up? Did you hear about that underwater outlaw? Underwater what? The underwater outlaw. <clears throat> no, I didn't hear about it. It was in the news all last week. No, no, I didn't hear about it. That Billy the Squid is one bad dude. <laughs> that is your dad joke of the week, brought to you by uh, Miller Lite, because it was in the fridge and it was cold. Nice. All right. So we've got some calamari marinating and some buttermilk. Now, we've taken those tubes. We've taken those tentacles. We've washed them really good. We've made sure that there is no uh, cartilage in there. We cut these in about a quarter-inch wide strips. We've added some Dirty Girl Bloody Mary rub. We have added some of that cold and freaking Greek. Now, John, yes. are you a tube or a tentacle kind of guy? Uh, I like it all, tubes and tennies. I'm telling you, if if you have some, like, big tentacles, you can always cut these in half. 
I love the mouthfeel. Jordan is completely grossed out right now. Yeah. But you don't know what you're missing, buddy. No, more you, for you, us. You don't have to. You're darn right you're going to yeah, eat it. More, well, more for us. Don't make them eat it, Chef All right, Greg. so seasoned flour. We've got some uh, some flour, some Dirty Girl Bloody Mary rub. And the best tool for this is going to be your hands. Jordan, I'm not going to get it on you. I'm, I'm, I'm giving it a shot, Greg. He's like backing up like I'm going to throw a squid at him. I mean, this is almost, I, I love, so you do this with octopus too. But every time I do this, I always think of the Detroit Red Wings. Okay. And those octopus being thrown on the rink mid-game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they do that for real? They Yeah, for sure. That's like they And they weren't like little baby octopus. Like they were some <laughs> like massive, like you need four guys to throw it over the rink. Like, like Yeah, Lord. like 40 pound octopus. That's funny. Chef Greg, we got a question from Alex Dewey. He asked, why buttermilk? Okay, so I like the uh, acidity that buttermilk has. It'll help uh, tenderize the, the calamari a little bit. It's also viscous enough that it will almost act like a little bit of a binder, so your breading is going to stick a little bit better. Um, there's no need to add egg in there. I just like buttermilk. I mean, you know, when Chef John makes fried chicken, he puts in buttermilk. Yeah, true story. And if it's good enough for Chef John, it's good enough for me. That's right. So, That's right. And I like to kind of massage the flour in there. So like our Rectech Grills expert, hopefully he's getting a nice uh, massage. I like to go ahead and just give it a rub and kind of open up in between those tubes and make sure I've got seasoning all over. Now what you don't want to do is make a big old mess of the oil and just take this and go blah, because there's a lot of like extra flour in there. So I grab a, uh, a strainer, okay? And I'm going to strain out the extra flour so that when I add this to the, uh, the grease, I'm not adding a whole bunch of extra stuff that I don't need, okay? All right, Chef Greg, we have a question from Lisa Wright. She Let's asked, what pots and pans do we use in the grills? All right, so we use a lot of uh, cast enamel cookery. It does a great job for us. Um, it's very easy to clean. Now, when you're making tomato sauce, this is non-reactive. You don't want to use uh, an aluminum pot when making tomato sauce because it'll react and get kind of uh, dark on you, and you'll get like a bitter... Um, kind of taste into your sauce. So we like uh, like a enamel cast pan, and you can pick these up pretty much anywhere, online. I got these, I think, at Sam's Club. I mean, not expensive at all. Uh, baking, uh, you know, corningware dishes or any sort of enamel baking dish that's safe for the oven can be safe for the grill. And then uh, we've got the Matador pan and that RTB 380 bullseye because we got a lot of questions, and people were asking, you know, can you fry in that? Yeah, you can fry in that. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to get some calamari in this RTB 380 bullseye. Now, we did some earlier because we are, we're fat kids around here. So That's you know right. before we did it, we, uh, we're we going to test that. Okay, let me just double check. We are right about 370 degrees. Okay. It's optimal frying temperature, Chef Greg, for them calamari. Shoot, yeah. So what we're doing is we're just go ahead and sprinkle this calamari in that grease, and always put it away from you, so you don't uh, end up wearing it. Ooh, I can hear the sizzle from here, man! I cannot wait to dig into this. All right, Chef Greg, let's talk maintenance on the grills real quick. We got a couple questions out here. Can you explain to everybody why you do not want to use a traditional wire brush to cre clean your gr grill? Okay, so first of all, if you put a wire brush in your grill, you do run the risk of those bristles coming out and getting in your food. That's not good. You're going to go to the ER with that. You, uh, you don't want to do that. So for me, I use a ball of, of aluminum foil, and that way I can just kind of push all that schmutz down, change the foil on my drip pan, and call it done. Um, but... It, it's ease and convenience. Don't overthink it, okay? If you've got old, you know, rusted out uh, tools, just get rid of it. So we've got a bowl here and some paper towels because that's about done. Almost done. So I'm going to go ahead and get us a little drip station because you want to make sure you get the grease somewhere to go. So a stainless bowl with some paper towels. And now you also want to make sure you get some of that Dirty Girl Bloody Mary rub on the ready because as it comes out, we're going to sprinkle it. Okay? Come on, Jordan. Now, once it floats, it's good to go. That's right. Okay? It's nice and golden brown. 
you don't want to overcook it. Okay, look how delicious that is. Ooh, so guys, we're gonna go ahead Greg, some love. I want to see some drain hearts, it off. some wow faces, some thumbs up. He is throwing it down today. Now the outside of this is ready to receive some deliciousness. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you want to hit it with that dirty girl, and that way as the oil sort of starts to uh, evaporate out of that calamari, it's got something to soak onto it, and that's what you want to do with that delicious. All right, Chef Greg, top fan Tom Quinn asks, does the pan affect the temperature sensor? Uh, no, so the uh, RTD probe is going to be below that pan. You're not going to have any issues with that. Now, we've got this set at about 475, and uh, with a gallon of grease, the, the oil is running right about 75 degrees, kind of below that set point. Um, but you want to be careful when you're deep frying anything, don't walk away. Whether you're putting a bullseye pan, uh, sorry, the matter pan of the bullseye, or if you're going to fry with the, uh, you know, a Dutch oven in there, you just want to be careful with it. But, I mean, that right there Ooh, is... Nelly. It looks so good, Chef Greg. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Chef Greg, they want to know, can they buy the Matador pan separate? You cannot, but you can buy the Matador for $2.99 free shipping to your door. And uh, you can do great things like stir fries. We took it camping with us. We made boiled peanuts, and we crushed some boiled peanuts this weekend. Oh, man. So much so, I'm making more right now because yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> okay. But we've got that delicious... Braised calamari. We've got the fried calamari with the spicy arrabbiata sauce. You guys said it can't be done. We did it two different ways. Calamari two ways. Fried and braised. Mm. Chef John, what you got, buddy? Okay, can you talk a little bit about the Dirty Girl uh, rub? What is the flavor profile? All right, so here's why I love that Dirty Girl rub. It's great in a steak. Why? There's horseradish powder and Worcestershire powder in here. Maybe you like seafood. It's got a little bit of that celery salt in there, which will really start to bring out some of that umami as well. Um, lovely on chicken. It's fantastic partnered with that Jody's Asian Persuasion. You can get, you can get that, uh, that dirty Asian or the bloody persuasion, however you want to you know, word that one. But I love this because it's a finer grind, so it really kind of soaks into the meat and gives you a really good base layer that does have sort of a slightly salty sort of note to it, but a really good depth of flavor. Uh, super, super, super delicious. And you could even have added, just like John did the other day, a little bit of that Dirty Girl Bloody Mary um, cocktail mix right. into the Arriabata sauce. Mm -hmm. Be delicious. It would be delicious. Chef John, what you got? Well, I got two questions for you. First okay. one's uh, question is, uh, they want to know about the Matador pan. Uh, when you put it inside the bullseye, do you still need to have the spacer or is there enough airflow? And the second one is, did you take the deflector plate out of the bullseye? Didn't take the deflector plate out. I literally just took the pan and put it right on the grates, okay? Leave the lid open, you don't need the uh, the lid closed. I just closed it so you wouldn't uh, see what I was doing behind me. But, oh, I'm sorry, Chef John, you wanna come over and eat some of this with me? Do you know I do? I mean, I love that spicy matter now. Ooh, Calamari, buddy. super tender. Great flavor. Is it delish? It does not suck. I can smell it from over there. Mm. Yeah, it's good business. Mm -hmm. That spicy man an hour mm -hmm. is where it's at. Oh yeah. All right, so let's go ahead. Oh man. Now you can see this calamari oh. is super tender. Okay? Woo! I actually broke one lifting it up, but we're gonna go ahead and cut this. Let's do it. I wow. mean, here I'll show you how tender it is. I don't want to make a mess, but look, I can cut through that calamari with a fork. Man, it's just like a big noodle at this point. <laughs> I mean, essentially, yeah. Yeah. But this is, this might be hot. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Oh, hot. Uh, oh, it's hot? Uh, oh, oh. oh, he says real hot. He said it's hot, hot, hot. It looks delicious, though. Mm -hmm. mm. It's kind of like a, just like a stuffed sausage, like just a sausage. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm blowing on my, mm. Oh, man, that's going on. Uh -huh. Really hot, though. But so good. Mm -hmm. You nailed it, my friend. It's like a cannelloni of the sea. It really is. If you've never tried braised stuffed calamar, mm. you're missing out. I mean, it's really good. You get a little bit of that acid from the tomato. The spiciness, a little bit of that red pepper flake coming yep. out. A little bit of the sauce, saltiness from the sausage. And then like the sea taste 
from the calamari, it's perfect blend. Mm -hmm. And like he said, so tender. Mm. Yeah. Chef Greg, you the ma'am. Well, mm. I'm excited for next week's theme mm. because we had a fantastic time cooking some classical Italian dishes from you. I mean, let's recap the week, John. Let's do it. Okay. Let's tell them. So let's go forwards to backwards. Calamari. Okay. Super simple, super easy, super delicious. Okay. We yeah. fried some. We braised some. We made some sauce from scratch all on the Rectech grill. Last night on Midnight Munchies, Late Night Munchies. That's right. Mix It Up Munchies. That's right. Chef John made a smoked tiramisu. Mm. And if you missed out on that, don't worry. Jump over to that IGTV and check it out. That's right. He made those lady fingers in the yeah. RT700. It was awesome. Dynamite. Yeah, it was awesome. They came out good. Yesterday afternoon on YouTube at 12 o'clock for lunch break, Chef John made a banging baked penne. Mm. Oh, man, that was so good. I think I still have a little left. Eh, I might eat it for breakfast. <laughs> and then for uh, Wednesday after hours, we showed you how to make that smoked chicken salt and boca. And that right there. Dude, that was so good. I mean, that's, that's as good it as it is gets it crushed all right and then tuesday for lunch break what did we do john I'm trying to think now i don't know we did something italian i did something tuesday. fun yeah it was italian well i can't remember what we did i, can't remember I was hoping i would have remembered it by the time i got the <laughs> do See, what now oh we did yeah. the seafood linguine. how can i forget that we was did that delicious. seafood the linguine yes man the shrimp the clams the bay scallops dude it was so good you crushed that i just crushed it got the basil out of the garden that was so good. Just butter me up like a biscuit. Chef Greg, would you put uh, cheese on top of the calamari, the baked, the baked one that we did? The you could one? if you want. Typically, you stay away from cheese when it comes to fish, but it's however you want to live your rec tech lifestyle. Grandma ain't watching, mm, she okay? Ain't watching. She might be listening because she can't see me, but definitely no cheese on the fish. All right, so tell, them what's, tell them what's in store for next week, Chef Greg. What do we got going on next weekend? I'm not telling you what's in store for next week, but I'll tell you where you can start your week off. You can start your, start your week off right here. Monday, Chef John doing Backyard and Beyond at mm -hmm. 4 o'clock. Okay, that's where you might get the glimpse of the theme. But we're not going to ruin it for you because it is that good. Chef John, I got your back. Here you go. Ready? Oh, thanks. Who? Hiya. Always looking out for my bro bro brother with the green headband today. That's right. Okay, but we're going to bring you a different style of content. We're going to kind of do something kind of all week long, and everybody's going to put their twist on it. And then uh, Barbie Jody, Dad Jody Flanagan will be gonna, back. That's what I said. Jody will be back next week. He'll yeah. be back. So... Now, we did a giveaway last week. Yeah, okay. we did, Chef Greg. Let me see what we're giving away. Jordan Johnson. Tease the giveaway. What's the giveaway? What did we win? It's on there. It is on there. Girl bundle. That was at the bottom. Beep, I, teased, beep, beep, beep. I teased the giveaway. I got to read down. <laughs> so we got a Dirty Girl Bundle. You're going to get some of those delicious rimmers. It's going to be that Bloody Mary rimmer, that Margarita Salt rimmer. It's amazing. You're going to get that Dirty Girl Sour Mix, which will make you the ultimate margarita. You're going to get that Dirty Girl uh, Original. And the, what I love about the Dirty Girl Bloody Mary cocktail mixers, all natural. Yeah. Okay. They are amazing. Not just to drink, but you can cook with them, too. We sure should put enough. a splash of the horseradish in there. That's right. That literally would have taken that one, like, yeah. up a couple layers. It totally would. I'm not going to lie. All right. But the winner from the Dirty Girl prize pack, and I'm not going to ruin it this time. There you go, Chef Greg. He's learning, everybody. Y'all can't catch him twice. Oh, I don't want to want to get on this guy's bad side <sighs> because he is a former special investigator. Uh-oh. He, okay. might, he, might, he might come after you. Yeah, that's okay? right. Keep you on the straight and narrow. He studied criminal justice at Denmark Tech. Okay. Got to keep your popos on your side. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Roger Nine. Hey, Roger. Now, I got I to gotta, I gotta ask a question. Roger. If you're a special Roger. investigator, is that really your name? Uh, probably I mean, not. it could it be like a, a fake name. So people don't, I mean, yeah. You could be going after the mob. I don't that's know. Right. That's right. But congratulations, Roger. Go ahead and send us a DM uh, on our Facebook page. And just remember, everybody out there watching, we will never, ever, ever, under any circumstance, ask for your financial information over social media. If you win a contest, we're going to announce it right here, live, on air. Okay? And ask you to reach out to us. And then we'll verify who you are, and we will ship out your Dirty Girl prize pack. Good, yeah. good stuff. Congratulations. That's awesome. All right, John. Well, I'm ready to eat now. The calamari, here's the thing. Okay. You want to eat it when it's hot. Right. So you don't want this sitting around all day. No, no, no. Okay? So no small batches. Yeah. 
Many batches. Yeah. Because this is enough for Chef John. And I'll you, make a batch Chef for myself. Crow. Oh, no, that's not enough for both of us? No. Oh, uh, just me. But I'll share with you uh, you're, all you're day nice long. Mm. You're a nice guy. Oh, man. Mm. Jordan, you want some? Yeah. No, uh, you can't have any. Yeah, I do. Let's I love home. the tentacles, man. Mm -hmm. The crispy, crispy right there. Mm -hmm. That sauce is on point. You did. You killed it. Mm. Chef Crow, should we spin that wheel? I don't know. You guys want to spin that wheel? Let us know. Let me see what they say, Chef Greg. Do you want us to spin down that below. wheel? Spin that wheel. Hmm. Spin that. Yeah, they're going crazy. They say spin right. that wheel. Let's spin the wheel. All right. Who hasn't spun the wheel? You did it uh, last time. I did it last time, I think. Okay. All no, right. no. I didn't do it last time. Jody did it last time. I think you were up. All right. So the wheel of Rectech is loaded with prizes of unspeakable value. We got the RT590. We, we got go. a Rectech hat. An icer go. cooler. Hey, that's a new... Rectech Ice or Cooler is a new addition. It totally RT is. RT700. Dirty Go Bundle. T-shirt of your choice. RT340 stickers, rub and sauce bundle. But I want to give away an RT700. Chef Greg, now That's what I, I want to do. I heard a rumor, okay? Now you can confirm or deny. You know what they say about rumors, right? But I heard a rumor that there may be an Academy ticket going up on that board. Um, Not one right now. Not because all the academies, with the exception of the September Academy, next year, September 2021, are sold out. Woo, so if sold you're on the fence, out. sold like, out. I mean, it's hotter than a front row Dallas Cowboys season pass right now. <laughs> all right, so the rules of Rectech Prize Will, you got to spin it clockwise. And you got to spin it with the utmost confidence. Okay? So let's go ahead and uh, what do you say, John? We spin it, land on RT700, right? Yes, yeah, so let's do the 700. All right, let's count it down. Back. Three, Three, two, two one, spin it! All right, as that's spinning around, you guys got to do something for us. Go ahead and smash, ugh, share this video, smash that share button, and uh, comment down below, tag a buddy in it, show Chef John and myself a little bit of love, and maybe you can be the winner of what lands on this Rectech prize pack. Start we'll announce that down, winner Chef next Greg. Friday it's on Fun Day down. Friday. And it just keeps going, man. It's slowing down. I really want to go on the prices right. It's I think I can land down. on a dollar. Come on, 700. Come on, 700. It's coming back around. Oh, wait, 590. There you uh, go. Ice and cooler? No, it's a hat. Yeah, all right. I'll take it. You can win yourself a hat, and maybe we might have some limited edition hats that aren't available yet to the public. So if you want to win yourself a hat, maybe one on the website or one that I'm wearing now that is one of one, don't worry. I won't send you my sweaty hat. I promise. They may People want try it. to get Jody sweaty hats all the time. Yeah, they may want your sweaty hat, Chef Greg. Mm, no. We'll start it for only page. Can't do it. Can't do it. But if you guys want to win yourself a Rectech hat, super simple. Go ahead and share this post. Comment down below. Tag a buddy that doesn't know about Rectech, and maybe you can win a hat. And maybe we do something different, John. Yeah. Maybe you and the buddy you tag both win hats. How about Ooh. that? It's a two for prize. I like it. Let's do two for. Let's do a two for. Let's prize. do a two for. Tag a buddy that doesn't know about Rectech. You both win hats. I like the way that works. I do. That's awesome. It's all about living the Rectech lifestyle. All about it, my friend. I love it. So, hey, guys. It was a blast cooking with you guys all week long. I want to give a shout-out to my main man, Chef John, for making yeah. me look good on camera. I, hey, you're It's a trade-off. I'll cook easy. some good stuff. Yeah, you're you, easy I to make look you, good. You cook some good stuff. No, I'll eat it. <laughs> you're I mean, easy to make look good. Chef Greg, though, tell them what's going on tonight. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. It is the... Uh, movie the patriot with mel gibson that's right september I mean, 11th playing the patriot like come on absolutely i mean talk about murica right there that's i mean I'm start saying. off like the revolutionary war back yeah, then right like, i don't know what y'all are planning on doing tonight but i'm gonna get my movie on. hey gates open at six there'll be food trucks here movie starts sharp at seven o'clock ten dollars a car load we got plenty of room here at the worldwide headquarters of Rectech. that's at 4301 evans to locks Road. Chef John, what you got? Another question? Yes. Just tell everybody for new products that are coming out, if they want to get caught up on uh, new stock updates, where do they need to go? What do they need to do? First, you got to eat some calamari because it's delicious. <laughs> mm. Manja. If you guys want to check out some insider information, make sure you jump onto the website, rectech.com. Scroll all the way to the bottom of any page. Add your email address in there, and we will send you some notifications of some cool stuff. If you want to get this recipe and more, go to rectech.com slash lunchbreak. Put your email address in there. You will only receive emails as it relates to delicious recipes that we make here at Rectech. Okay? And, and a little reassurance. All of the recipes we make here are recipes we have cooked multiple times. We're not going to let you down. We're not going to give you some 
you know, a bozo recipe that doesn't work. No, we're not because gonna we know your you. time is valuable. That's right. And food's expensive. That's right. And we're, we're not, not going to waste today. either of it. No. But if you guys have all. any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to Chef John, Jody, myself. <laughs> you can follow us on all social media. It's going to be Chef John Pennell. It's going to be Barbecue Dad, Jody Flanagan, Chef Greg Muller on all platforms of social media. And while you're at it, maybe we uh, just go ahead and email Jody. Yeah. Hope your vacation was wonderful. Yes. It's going to be Jody at RecTech.com. Just in the subject line, just wish him a happy vacation. That's and we miss him, and we'll put him to work on Monday. Yeah. I guarantee. Back to the grind. For sure. I'm going to go play golf on Monday, though. <laughs> all right. Appreciate you guys following us on all social media. It's been a blast. A special shout-out goes to all the first responders, all the police, all the EMS workers across the country, keeping us safe out there, keeping us safe. 19 years ago. I can't believe it's been 19 years. 19 years, man. Seems like it was yesterday. I know, right? It's been a long time. Well, from all of us here at RecTech, we wish you a happy, happy weekend. Come join us here for movie night. God bless you. God bless the United States. And we will see you at, at the, the RecTech. Do, do, do. Bobby Massingale, what's do, up, buddy? Do, do. Dorothy, Mike. Do, do, we got like do. five Mikes watching right now. Rec Mike Smith, Tech Mike Bradshaw, Brandon, David Humphreys. What's up, buddy? Andy, you have down. yourself a good weekend. Your Sean Woods, Sean Woods, you were the winner like earlier this week. How you doing, buddy? David Pruitt, do, there's do, never do, leftovers. That just means you're not cooking do, enough. Do, do, do. Justin Pass, what's up, buddy? Michelle Pitter. Gilbert, Rick Brian, Justin, we wish you guys do, a great do, weekend. Do, From everybody do, here, have a good do, one. We'll do, see you later. Do, do, do.